Anyway, the producer of the movie, mm-hmm. um, they requested us. We were spread my wings, man. Oh. We were we were killing it at that time. Okay. Spread my wings was like number one video in the country mm-hmm. and rising wherever. Mm-hmm. And then we got picked for the role, man. And and it was it had to be Atlantic com- connection because you know it's true and Levert. But y'all get in the movie. It's one thing to yeah, be they put yeah, in the movie. Yeah. We, was, we had to come off tour to do the movie. We couldn't believe it. We went to the studio, New York. Uh, we went to this uh, this theater, like this little small theater. They had us in this little small theater to let us see what Levert had did first. Man, oh, man. When we saw what Levert did, we were done. We were through. <laughs> we were like, what are we? what are we going to do? What are we going to come up with after hearing what they just did? Like a tough act It was act really to follow, crazy. Huh? It was really crazy. Because, wow. you know, number one, you know, they were, you know, they were doing their dash record, you know. It was just, it was amazing on how they put that together. It was incredible. So, uh, it, it took us a long time for us to come up what we came up with. signed to a production company um, that was signed to the label and once we got familiar with publishing and mechanical royalties and things of that nature uh, we presented that knowledge to the production company we were signed to and you know we just wanted to negotiate a better situation you know because they were getting half of our publishing yet they didn't write songs or anything so uh, you know we had the meeting with them and you know, they told us, read your contract. You know, they were like. And um, you know, when we came into the business, we didn't know about any of that stuff. We didn't know what publishing was. We just wanted to be like Michael Jackson, you know. We just wanted to be stars. Once we found out about certain aspects of music business, we started asking questions. For some reason, when you're signed to people or production company or what have you, they, they really, they're not fond of you asking questions and growing too fast. And that ultimately was the demise of Troop as we knew it once we decided to leave our first production company. It took two years for us to um, go through litigation. By that time, Boys to Men came, Jodeci came. It kind of just changed things for us. We had dissension to start coming amongst the group members seems like overnight before we could really accomplish what we wanted. We um, changed management. We went to a busted management, which was uh, MC Hammer's brothers, Louis Burrell, his management company, along with Hammer. We were excited about that because Hammer had sold so many albums at the time. We just knew the kind of performers and the kind of album sales we had just come off of that that would be the perfect move for. When it came time for us to do this, the third album, the Deeper album, 
I, I saw how all I do work for is we picked a good song. Nobody, you knew it just a little. Wasn't a smash, but it's a good song. Certain people knew it, you know. Um, so I wanted a song like that, and uh, Sweet November was the first song that popped out. You know, little baby face in L.A. that I was that troop was getting ready to remake Sweet November. We were rehearsing next to each other. Um, they had just signed Tony Braxton, so there was you know whatever. So um, so L.A. came over there and was like, man, you should remake uh, I'll Send You Roses. You know, I'll Send You Roses, and I was like. And then Kenny was like, "No, nah, Sweet November will be, you know, that'll be a good one." So, but I was already been on Sweet November, you know. So anyway, um, we were on our way to. We got to rehearsal one day, and this was the day I was actually going to record the song. Mm -hmm. So I told Babyface, I went over to next door, and I was like, "Hey, Kenny, you know, I'm uh, getting ready to record Sweet November. Um, if you want to come by the studio." Uh, I would love that, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know, I would love for you to come by. I didn't know how to ask him for help or anything. You know, I just invited him to the studio, and so he, you know, his room was quiet like Mike. You know, so he got the address and stuff from me, and um, he showed up to the studio that evening with his crew, all of his, his of his equipment, all his gear. He brought everything and produced the song with me. Wow. Yes. Me, him, and Daryl Simmons is in the studio coming up with the C, 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 C. You know that's that. And you know such a glory, so dream. Well, I can't do a little too shy to say to each other that together. two weeks in a row wow. so but anyway I'm just that was a wonderful experience um, that sweet November man working with baby face
backgrounds and things like that. But them two songs, we had, everybody had a little part, something to say on it. And those are my favorite type of songs when a group is doing it. Everybody is still. <laughs> showed me how to write songs so I was becoming this Frankenstein monster between Alan, Chucky Booker, Joe LaVert, Keith Sweat, Babyface, all these people that I was around. I was becoming a little Mike. It's just like Michael Jackson walking through Motown, walking in different rooms, walking in on Stevie and it, I was getting the same experience but I was absorbing it on purpose. It wasn't accidental. I was trying to get all of this stuff so that I could be uh, one of all these things, you know. So anyway, the more I became that, the writer, producer, industry, music guy, uh, the more Alan was on the kick of people knowing and respecting him for being the lead singer of Truth, mm -hmm. right? And I mean from managers, to, I don't care who we were engaged with, when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm the lead, so I'm Alan from True, you know. I think he looked at me in a way, in comparison to himself, and that caused him to, uh, it's like a love-hate thing, he hates me. But this is a very kind, good guy. This is a very good guy that I'm dealing with, so I love him. You know what I'm trying to say? Once I saw coming up, once I saw he was shaky, like once I saw he would make a decision and it wasn't a business, it was personal. Like he would make a personal decision on some business. I never did trust his decision making from songs to business. Right. Get it? Uh, and that caused a further risk. Because now Steve is against my music. Nothing to do with that. But I know that if I've been working on an album for six months and I haven't seen you until you get a call and say, hey, the album is about to wrap up. And then all of a sudden you rush in with two songs at the very end. Everybody in the group is looking and saying, let's listen. Yeah, I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm the one representing the other three. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I'm speaking for them with him, so with him, I'm taking on all that too. 
-hmm. Now it's us against him because I'm speaking very bluntly about everything that's going on, bro. Because it was never an issue with me. It was an issue with him. Yes. yes. And what was you know. the issue? Was it just ego? Was it ego, jealousy, all, all of that stuff? You know, mm -hmm. he, Alan is the oldest. He's the oldest member of the group. Yeah. I'm the youngest, but okay. I'm a leader. And I work yeah, very, very hard. Yeah, you told me hard. exactly what was going to happen with you this know? interview, so I can I see how that goes. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I just, you know, I, I work really hard. Um, and, you know, he, he taught me how to write songs and everything. So he was always a big brother to me. Uh. But it wasn't reciprocated, you know, so...